um, as you can probably tell by the array of shoes I've got going on here, I thought today I'd vlog a little bit about what footwear, foot, blah, 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 what footwear I train in um, and what my kind of choices are for different elements of my, my week and the sessions I do, the easy runs, etc, etc. Uh, quite a few people have asked me recently kind of what shoes I do wear and why and what for. So I thought, why not make a video on it? Um, I'm really lucky to be sponsored by Hoka One One, not Hoka One One. Um, so yeah, I do do wear all their shoes and they've got some great innovation going on at the moment um, and they're continuing, continually, I can't say the word, developing new shoes with new technology. Um, and I've been with the brand now since 2000 and 17 and I've seen a massive progression in their shoes and yeah, I really really enjoy wearing them and Have run multiple PVs in them. So they must be doing something right. Uh, I am quite honest about My opinion on shoes and there are there are a few models of the Hoka, Hoka shoes that I don't wear and they probably won't be um, summarized in my video as I tend not to order them so yeah, all the shoes that I reviewed, they are the ones that I typically do train in. And if they aren't on this list, it's probably because I either don't suit them or I don't enjoy wearing them. So, so yeah. Anyway, let's get cracking with the video. Right. So, maybe I'll start with my new latest favourite pair, um, which are these bad boys. Uh, these are the new Mac 4s. Um, which were actually released on the 1st of March this year. So they are yeah, really new to the market. Um, if I'm honest, I didn't order any of these in my latest shoe order because I really did not enjoy wearing the Mac 3s. Um, so when these kind of turned up, I was a bit like, hmm, not really sure about these, but I've got to say absolute game changer. It's actually 192 grams. I really enjoy wearing it if I'm honest. It's got the Profly foam in it, which are on all the, the, the fly, products of Hoka. This shoe, great lightweight, all round trainer. I really, yeah, really enjoyed wearing it. I was a bit sceptical to start with, but the new design, the the kind of the Achilles tab at the back, I've had a dodgy Achilles, so that's great. The the kind of, the upper is really secure. It's a great shoe, good traction on the road. Um, could do anything from like a long, easy run in these to kind of picking up the pace. So yeah, it's a great all rounder. Um, if you're looking just for one, shoe uh, that you kind of want to do everything then I kind of definitely recommend this if you know the brand and you think Rincon, Carbon X, Clifton that is what this shoe is combined in one uh, so yeah you are getting a lot of bang for your dollar uh, so you definitely would recommend picking up a pair of Mac 4s if you haven't already so we have the uh, Carbon X SPE now, if I'm totally honest, I think I've worn this about three times and I don't rate it that much. Um, not because um, of the Carbon X at all. I absolutely love that shoe, but uh, it's just with the upper on this one, I find my foot slips around a lot. It's not as secure um, and it definitely feels a lot heavier than the Carbon X, although the actual elements of the shoe are exactly the same. Um, so you've got the carbon plate, you've got the profile foam, you've got, you know, it is a light, it is a light, it's a racing flat, it's a lightweight shoe and um, yeah, I think just they fiddled around with this one a little bit too much and they, the Carbon X and the Carbon X2 are absolutely great shoes but uh, yeah, I tend to find that my foot is not sec as secure in this because it hasn't got the same kind of, the, I, I don't know how to explain it, this is, yeah, it's all like one thing. Uh, so it's like more of a slide-in shoe. You almost don't need the laces done up on this shoe. I definitely recommend going for like the Carbon X or the Carbon X2 rather than the Carbon X SPE. Next we have this bad boy. This was released last year. Uh, completely new design with a very funky heel. This is the Clifton Edge. So it's part of the Clifton family, which are my favourite Hoka shoes. Um, this one I've got to say, I'm not fully convinced by it. It is 
like bloody comfortable if I'm honest and the heel is great it kind of just you know it gives you a really smooth ride you, you roll through the foot it's really good for for when you just want some really easy, easy mileage um, and I tend to wear these on like super super easy recovery days um, or for warm-ups or something like that um, again I do prefer the Clifton 7s uh, to this shoe but uh, it provides exactly what it says on the box. Um, I've recommended this shoe to people and they've absolutely loved it. Um, so it has had really good feedback. <laughs> it has, makes you feel good when you're running, even when you're not feeling good. Next up, we have my absolute favorite shoe, okay? We're really lucky to get, um, just to put in shoe orders twice a year. I honestly, ordered seven of these just gone because they are my ultimate favorite shoe you can like especially new out of the box you can almost see how cushioned these are um they say you run on a cloud it's literally like running on a cloud and the, honestly the colorway here is amazing so yeah clifton sevens i started running in the clifton threes i progressed all the way through uh there's never been a uh advanced new advanced model that i haven't enjoyed running in but these are the bomb um they've got the new achilles kind of heel easy to put on easy to put off uh like i said earlier um i have had a dodgy achilles in the past and i've had no problems with these um they've just made it look like a cool shoe uh, when i signed with hoka in 2017 their shoes weren't very cool looking but now they're really good so yeah, it's a great shoe. Um, it's got a meta rocket in it. So you've got that heel to toe push off. It just, I don't know. I can't, I haven't got anything negative to say about this shoe. Um, in the past, I've been plagued with knee injuries. Uh, I've had two knee operations. So uh, ever since I've been wearing Hoka, they've been fine. So I honestly attribute that to, to this shoe. Um, I tend to probably put about 400 miles on one of these before I retire them, but they would go on further than that. And I think because they've got that rubberized sole, um, they are just a really durable shoe and it's worth spending the money on something like this, um, just to provide you with that, you know, that really smooth ride. So yes, this is and has been my favorite mileage go-to shoe since day one. Next up, we have this baby. So this is the Rincon 2, and until the Mac 4 came along, this was my go-to shoe for anything from a build run, a up-tempo long run, a tempo session. I have even session in this shoe. It is lightweight. It's around 200 grams, I think. It's super lightweight, super comfortable. It's a bit more like an original, racing flat in a way uh yes it has got kind of a massive heel but you just got that kind of feeling that you're in this shoe to to yeah pick up the pace if you want to if i was being chased by a dog i'd want to be in this shoe for my for my escape um again cool colorway it's a mix between kind of yeah uh a carbon x and a clifton 7 again you've kind of got that mix of of lightweight cushioned but responsive ride um and again it's got a meta rocker in it you've got that heel to toe kind of push off uh and yeah it's an all-round great shoe one thing i would say about this is it's not as durable as some of the others i'd say the clifton and the mac four are a lot more durable these ones tend to kind of give up after about 300 miles and you can definitely feel once the cushion cushioning has gone um that you kind of need to replace the shoe because you're not getting that response from it. But uh, I guess because the price of this one is a little less, you're almost better off um, replacing it once it is dead, just so you can continue to have that really good ride. Next up, we have got the Carbon X2. This is a new racing flat from Hoka. Um, it is, uh, you know, an 
advancement of the Carbon X, which I set all my row PBs in so far. Um, so I was really excited to kind of get my hands on this shoe and I've got to say they've really improved the colorway from the bright orange to, to this now. Um, again, this is a racing flat, so it's designed for, you know, high intensity training and racing. Uh, it's got the carbon plate in it and it's got kind of the extended heel at the back. It's got that ability for you to kind of push through um, and like be as economical as possible in the shoe. Uh, again, it's got a great locking system with the laces, which kind of hold your feet in place. And it's got the new Achilles heel on the back, uh, again, which takes pressure off your hip. Achilles, great for basically anyone. Um, there's not a lot of negativity about the shoe. I mean, I didn't have a very good session the first time I wore it, but I think that was because I was just not running very well and had absolutely no reflection of the shoe whatsoever. So I was a little bit skeptical going back into it again. Um, but I've been wearing it a little bit recently and it's great. Um, it's definitely an advancement of the, the first model, the Carbonette. And again, it's a really durable sole. Um, one thing I've noticed with all the Focus racing flats is they do perform well in any weather condition, which is massive, especially racing in the UK. Um, so it'll hold up well when it's wet outside, icy, kind of not very good conditions on the road. You'll still get a really good ride from one of these. So. Yeah, I'm excited for road races to come back so I can wear this and hopefully send a PB. And finally, we have my all-time favourite racing flat. Um, when I got my hands on this last year, I kind of picked and cho chose when and where I wore them in sessions because I wanted to save them for races um, of very little. Um, but now I've got a few more, I tend to wear these most Tuesdays of every single week. Um, they're great on the road, they're great on the track, um, and I think that's great. Like, I can put these on for a track session and I can run, I can run just as fast as I can in the spikes really, which which is a great thing. Um, again, it looks a little bit more like a traditional racing flat, which I do kind of like, I like that kind of just being on the ground feeling. I don't know if that's the best way to explain it, but again, yeah, it's got a carbon plate in it, uh, really durable sole um, and great cushioning. You get a great response off the ground um, and I don't feel beaten up when I've worn this shoe so I can go and do a session um, and I don't wake up the next day with burning calves or like really dominy legs and I think that is a reflection of the shoe. It's on the track, I use this on the road. It's a firm shoe. You get that good return off the ground and you feel like you're popping, which is what you want. If you're looking for an all round great racing flat this is the one I would recommend. So, as you can see, I have an array of different shoes um, and I've done my best to very poorly explain why I use each one and what I use it for. Um, I am continually excited to, to receive shoes from Hoka and um, their kind of innovation and stuff, like I said earlier, is, is really impressive from their humble beginnings in France on some mountain. Okay, so my phone ran out of memory just as I was finishing that, which is great. So anyway, what I was going to say was from the humble beginnings in France to where they are now, it's been great to kind of see the brand and the shoe develop and I'm excited to, to watch it grow and expand and become a household name. I know more and more people are, are enjoying the shoes and buying them. So yeah, get on it. Um, if you've got any questions about the shoes, just write them down in the comment box below and give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more kind of content like this. And don't forget to subscribe.